everyone. Uh, welcome to another story time with Miss Leah. Here we are right in the middle of Holy Week. It is Wednesday and we have another Bible story. Uh, remember so far we have gone through our um, stories of Holy Week and Sunday we remembered Jesus's triumphal entry into Jerusalem where he rode in on a donkey where the people were singing and proclaiming him as their king. And then on Tuesday, we talked about what was happening at uh, just before the Last Supper and at the Last Supper. And this bag of coins, remember it reminds us of the story of Judas, which is a sad story. Um, and he rejected Jesus and he ultimately is the one uh, that the guards are able to use to know where Jesus is and to arrest him. And then yesterday, oh, is that all? Are we on today? Oh, yesterday we talked about the Last Supper and we talked about Jesus and how he washed the disciples' feet and how he broke the bread and he shared the cup and how the disciples did not quite understand yet because Jesus was still with him. And so when Jesus would say things like, every time you do this, remember me, they weren't sure exactly what Jesus meant. We're going to continue our story, and I have some scripture to read to you guys today. And here, we're going to flip it over. You see what that is? You see it's a rooster? And you remember what part of the Easter story has to do with a, with a rooster. Well, if you don't remember, let's go back to the upper room where Jesus is with his disciples. One of the conversations that Jesus had with Peter, who was also called Simon. Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you disciples like wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon. I have prayed that your faith will not fail. When you have turned back, help your brothers to be strong. But Simon replied, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, you will say three times that you do not know me, and you will do it before the rooster crows today. Then Jesus asked the disciples, do you need anything? Did you need anything when I sent you without a purse, bag, or sandals? Nothing, they answered. He said to them, but now if you have a purse, take it. Also take a bag. If you don't have a sword, sell your coat and buy one. Okay, so Jesus knows what's going to happen, but the disciples, remember, they still don't know. So, when Jesus is arrested in the garden, all the disciples run away. And except for Peter and John, they kind of sneak behind Jesus and follow him. So they kind of know what's going on. Peter ends up standing outside where Jesus is tried, and he's standing around a fire, and we're going to read that part of the story. So here is a rooster. This is our symbol for today, and I even have, if I was with you guys, I'd give you all a feather to help you remember this part of the story. So I have some feathers here to help us remember the story of Peter. Now this could be a sad story too, but it doesn't end like Judas' story. And whenever I think of Judas' story, I like to think of Peter's story too. Because Peter's story um, has a happy ending and not a sad ending, even though it's a sad story. So here's what happens with Peter. Peter says he does not know Jesus. Then the men arrested Jesus and led him away. They took him into the high priest's house, and Peter followed them from far away. Some people there started a fire in the middle of the courtyard. Then they sat down together, and Peter sat down with them. A female servant saw him sitting there in the firelight. She looked closely at him, and then she said, This man was with Jesus. But Peter said he had not been with Jesus. Woman, I don't even know him, he said. That's one. A little later, someone else saw Peter. You also are one of them, he said. No, Peter replied, I am not. That's 
Jesus' rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked right at Peter. And then Peter remembered what the Lord had spoken to him. The rooster will crow today, Jesus had said. Before it does, you will say three times that you don't even know me. Peter went outside and he broke down.
doorstep for five long minutes, scratching his head first with one hand, then with the other. Now, what did Johnny Chuck mean by saying that he would see me in the spring, said Peter Rabbit to himself. Here it isn't even winter yet, and it will be a long, long time before spring. Yet, Johnny Chuck spoke just as if he didn't expect to see me until winter has passed. Is he going away somewhere? If he isn't, why won't I see him all winter, just as I have all summer? The more Peter thought about it, the more puzzled he became. At last, he had a happy thought. I'll just run down to the smiling pool and ask Grandfather Frog. He's very old and very wise, and he will surely know what Johnny Chuck meant. So, kicking up his heels, Peter Rabbit started down the lone little path, lipperty lipperty lip, across the green meadows to the smiling pool. There, he found Grandfather Frog sitting as usual on his big lily pad. But the lily pad wasn't as green as it used to be, and Grandfather Frog didn't look as smart as usual. His big, goggly eyes looked heavy and dull, just as if they didn't see much of anything at all. Grandfather Frog nodded sleepily and once nearly fell off the big lily pad. Good morning! Good morning, Grandfather Frog! shouted Peter Rabbit. Eh? What? said Grandfather Frog, blinking his eyes and putting one hand behind an ear as if he was hard of hearing. I said good morning, Grandfather Frog! shouted Peter Rabbit, a little louder than before. No, replied Grandfather Frog grumpily. It isn't a good morning. It's too chilly. He shivered as he spoke. Peter Rabbit pretended not to notice how grumpy Grandfather Frog was. In his most polite way, he asked, Can you tell me, Grandfather Frog, where Johnny Chuck spends his winter? He spends it at home, of course. Don't bother me with such foolish questions, snapped Grandfather Frog. But if he's going to spend the winter at home, why did what did he mean by saying that he would see me in the spring? Just as if he didn't expect to see me before then, persisted Peter Rabbit. Grandfather Frog yawned, shook himself, yawned again, and said, Johnny Chuck probably meant just what he said, and I think I'll follow his example. It's getting too cold for an old fellow like me. I begin to feel it in my bones. I'm getting so sleepy that I guess the sooner I hunt up my bed in the mud at the bottom of this smiling pool, the better. Shug-a-rum. Johnny 
want Mr. Buzzard to get away before you could ask him what Johnny Chuck and Grandfather Frog had meant. Peter couldn't shout because he hasn't much of a voice, you know, and then he was out of breath anyway. So he just made those long legs of his go as fast as ever they could, which is very fast indeed. Just as Peter Rabbit almost reached the tall dead tree, old Mr. Buzzard jumped off the branch he'd been sitting on, gave two or three flaps with his great wings, and then, spreading them out wide, began to sail round and round and up and up, as only old Mr. Buzzard can. Wait! Wait! Please wait! panted Peter Rabbit, but his voice was so weak that old Mr. Buzzard didn't hear him. He saw Peter, however, but of course he didn't know what Peter wanted to talk with him. With a long swoop, old Mr. Buzzard sailed off right over Peter's head. Goodbye, Br'er Rabbit. I'll see you in the spring, said old Mr. Buzzard. And before Peter could say a word, he was out of hearing up in the sky. Peter watched him go up and up until he was just a speck in the blue, blue sky. Now, what did he mean by that? Is he going to stay up in the sky until spring? Asked Peter Rabbit of himself. But not knowing, of course, he could not answer. Jack Squirrel is too busy to talk. Peter Rabbit sat with his mouth wide open, staring up into the blue, blue sky, where old Mr. Buzzer was growing smaller and smaller. Finally, he was just a teeny weeny speck, and then Peter couldn't see him at all. Peter hitched up his trousers and sat for a long time, looking very thoughtful. He was troubled in his mind. That First, Johnny Chuck had said, I'll see you in the spring. Then he disappeared underground. Then, Grandfather Frog had said, I'll see you in the spring. And he had disappeared into the smiling pool. Now, old Mr. Buzzard had said, I'll see you in the spring. And he had disappeared up into the blue, blue sky. And they all spoke just as if they meant it. I believe I'll go over and see Happy Jack Squirrel, said Peter to himself. Perhaps he can tell me what it all means. So off started Peter Rabbit. Liberty lip, liberty lip, through the green forest, looking for Happy Jack Squirrel. Pretty soon he caught a glimpse of Happy Jack's gray coat. Hi, Happy Jack, called Peter, hurrying as fast as he could. Hello, Peter Rabbit, don't bother me this morning. I've got too much to do to be bothered, said Happy Jack, digging a little hole in the ground while he talked. Peter grew curious at once, so curious that he forgot all about what he was going to ask Happy Jack. He sat down and watched Happy Jack put a nut in the hole and cover it up. Then Happy Jack hurried to dig another hole and do the same thing over again. What are you doing that for, asked Peter Rabbit doing it for? Why, I'm getting ready for winter, of course, silly, said Happy Jack as he paused for breath. But I thought you stored your nuts and corn in a hollow tree, exclaimed Peter Rabbit. So I do, replied Happy Jack, and I would be foolish to put all my supplies in one place, so I bury some of them. But how do you remember where you bury them, persisted Peter. I don't always, but when I forget, my nose helps me. Then I just dig down and get them, said Happy Jack. Now I can't stop to talk anymore, for I am late this year, and the first thing I know, winter will be here. Then Peter remembered what he had come for. Oh, Happy Jack, what did Johnny Chuck and Grandfather Frog and old Mr. Buzzer mean by saying that they would see me in the spring? Can't stop to tell you now, replied Happy Jack, running this way and that way and pulling over the fallen leaves to hunt for another nut. Winter's coming, and I've got to be ready for it. Can't stop to talk. And that was all Peter Rabbit could get out of him, although he followed Happy Jack about and bothered him with questions until Happy Jack quite lost his temper. Peter sighed. He saw a chatter of the red squirrel. 
we'll have to watch and see what happens as outdoors as we get closer and closer to it being warm all of the time. What changes will we notice? What things will we see in God's creation?